the Mac Mini 2012. Is it just an outdated relic or the new hotness? Hey everyone, it's Jeff the IT Guy. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Mac Mini 2012. This is probably to be considered one of the, the greatest of the Mac Minis, not in terms of just sheer performance, but because it was easily upgradable. You could uh, access it, take it out, and within half an hour you could go ahead, you could upgrade the RAM to 16 gigs of DDR3, you could update the hard drive to an SSD, and from with a kit from iFixit, you could even add a second hard drive. This is back before Apple decided that it was necessary to not allow anything to be changed. In the new Mac Mini, you can change uh, the RAM and the RAM alone. Um, it's a little bit more involved than what it is in the 2012 version. And so this is the late 2012. It's got the i7 quad core with hyper threading. It's got 16 gigs of 1600 megahertz RAM that I upgraded and a two terabyte Western digital hard drive that I put in it. And so for just uh, a couple hundred dollars, I was able to pick this up off of eBay. And then with some stuff that I had lying around, I was able to just go ahead and upgrade it into something that was actually quite shocking. Um, this ended up being an awesome, awesome little machine. And what I mean by that was it pretty much handled everything that I threw at it. Uh, upgraded it to Catalina, OS Catalina. And so it's a pretty great machine, or at least I thought so. And so let's get into talking about the experience of using the Mac Mini 2012. And so just like any other Mac, you've got the, the you know, the any other Apple, you've got the Mac ecosystem. It works great. You know, it's got Bluetooth. It's not the greatest. The wireless isn't the greatest. Um, it is, you know, a little bit outdated. However, for something that was released in late 2012, with a couple hundred dollars, you can turn it into something amazing. And so, like I said, I put a Western Digital Blue two and a half inch SSD in it. That's going to be linked below. And uh, 16 gigabytes of Corsair 1600 megahertz uh, sodium DDR3, which will also be linked below. And so this, like I said, turned out to be a pretty, pretty great little development machine, right? And so if you're a developer and you're looking to get into the Mac ecosystem, you can't really go wrong with the 2012 Mac Mini. Um, like I said, I paid $300 for it off of eBay. Uh, it's quite a steal if you ask me. And then with just a couple hundred dollars, well, actually, it's just stuff I already had laying around. So I didn't really have to put anything into it. However, I was able to turn it into something that really did scream. And so let's talk about some numbers. So first of all, I was able to edit on this because, you know, I wanted to see how it done in Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, I was able to edit a 30-minute video, render it, I mean, not edit it, but render a 30-minute video with some transitions and some color grading in about 8 minutes and 15 seconds at 1080p. Put that over to Premiere Pro, and it was around 58 minutes uh, with the same stuff. And I believe the reason for that is because Premiere Pro exported it at a higher quality um, than what Final Cut Pro did. However, that being said, um, editing in Final Cut Pro was a lot smoother. Uh, the timeline, working with the edits and transitions, the color grading, all of that, scrubbing the footage um, was a lot smoother on in Final Cut Pro 10 than what it was with Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro was almost unusable. And so if you're wanting to get into Final Cut Pro, you can actually do you know, some business on this. If you're wanting to start a YouTube channel and all you've got is like 350 bucks or $400 and you need to, a machine, uh, try and find you one of these. Like I said, you know, $300 and a couple extra hundred bucks in upgrades and you got yourself a really good machine to get your start with editing. Uh, as long as it's not Premiere Pro, right? For doing stuff like web development, this thing's great, right? It's very fast um, for web development. You know, of course, you, you can use the terminal and do all your command line. Uh, you can install uh, MAMP, um, go ahead and you can install MySQL and Apache and all of that and have your really nice 
uh, development environment on this for really cheap, one that's going to be stable and last, um, which is originally why I wanted to look at it and see how it did with development. However, when I started looking at uh, Android Studio and Xcode, that was a different story. And so the programs themselves, they ran fine, um, but however, in Android Studio, once you started up the emulator um, for the Android phone, it got very jittery. It wasn't smooth. The fans, they ramped up as long as they could go, and it really didn't do uh, that great um, whenever you're trying to actually look at the emulator. The emulator was very glitchy. It was buggy. Uh, it's very slow, unresponsive. It wasn't smooth. Even with 16 gigs of RAM, it had a really hard time in Android Studio. Xcode was a little bit better, but not much. Um, whenever you opened up the iPhone uh, emulator on it, you could definitely tell that the system was starting to lag behind. It's starting to use a lot more resources, even with the SSD and the RAM. It was still struggling. It wasn't very responsive. And this was with basic code, right? I'm, I'm not a, a mobile developer. So I actually didn't even write any code, I just used uh, what came in it. So I can't imagine what it would have been like if I would have actually tried to have written a small application. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about benchmarks. And so I ran a Geek, Geekbench on it and I ran the Mac Mini here against um, a Ryzen 5 1600AF, which is essentially a 2600. And so let's talk about those numbers. 717 on a single core and 2850 on the multi-core. The Ryzen 5 1600AF, which I said is essentially a 2600, it scored 923 on the single core and 5152 on the multi-core. And so you can actually see that the, the single thread performance on the Ryzen 5 was only about 200 points higher However, the multi-core was double um, what the Mac Mini put out. And that's because the Mac Mini has eight threads and the Ryzen 5 had 12 threads. However, the single core performance, as you've seen, um, actually wasn't that, wasn't that big of a gap. And so after reviewing this, I've been using this thing for about two weeks now. I'm using it for my, my daily driver for work and everything. I've got to say, if all I had was $325 to purchase the machine and then an extra $100 to go ahead and upgrade the RAM and an SSD, I would pull the trigger on this every day of the week. It works great for me, for my doing my web development, for managing, um, for while gagging around with Final Cut Pro, um, working on things like that. It was fantastic. And so I would have to say, that the Mac Mini late 2012 is definitely viable in 2020. It's an excellent machine and it just goes to show that the older Macs like the 2012s are just as good now as they were then even though they don't have all the bells and whistles or the performance they're still once again a viable option. Hey if you like this video leave a like, uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think about the 2012 Mac Mini. Um, if you have one, if you've upgraded, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this. And um, we've got a lot more stuff going on with the Raspberry Pi. We've got things going on with the Career Advice. Um, we're going to be looking at some, a lot of other things, maybe some laptop reviews here on the channel. Hey, you all have a great day and thank you for watching.